Now that we've got the winch primer fitted to the, the discovery here, we're going to uh, put the winch in place. Uh, obviously, that's going to involve cutting some of this grill away uh, because there's not room there. Uh, we'll be fitting an isolator probably around here somewhere, uh, which isolates the winch from the battery. Uh, and we'll also need to wire the, uh, the, the winch in to the battery, which is situated under here. The winches always, always must have an isolator and always must be wired straight to your battery, not onto an earth point on the car. The wires have to go straight to your battery. So, <coughs> winch, isolated battery, doesn't matter where it is on the car, that is uh, what has to be done. And what exactly is an isolator? An isolator is uh, a switch. It can either be electronically uh, operated or uh, manually operated. And what that does is uh, disconnect the winch from the battery. So if there's any problem with the winch whatsoever when being used, you can, for safety, turn that key off, turn that switch off, and then the, uh, the winch becomes dead. OK, I'm just going to put this earth wire on here, first of all because it's right at the base of the winch, which is going to be right next to the bumper, uh, and uh, it's going to be nigh on impossible to uh, get that bolt in if the winch is in place. So we put the earth wire in first. Um, generally, the, the wires will come with the winch uh, and will be pre-installed, uh, uh, just coming out of the control pack like so, so this part of the instalment won't have to happen. But as this is a, uh, a used winch, it's going on the car for the first time, I've got to use some new cables because there's no cables with it. Right, now we've got the grill off. Um, the first thing I see is this uh, cooler here uh, for the gearbox. This is an automatic uh, transmission, this one, and some pipes, which is very close uh, to where the winch base is, is here. So I'm just going to offer the winch in and just to make sure we've got enough clearance on all of this without it rubbing. So the winch down like so. And I'm just going to put a bolt in the hole. We might have to just move that pipe a little bit. Uh, but there's plenty of room on the bracket so that pipe can be pushed back a little bit. So I'm happy with that. Uh, originally, this winch came with a wire rope. And generally with wire ropes, uh, a roller ferry is used. Uh, but we're using plasma. <coughs> and the plasmas are better suited to what we call a halls type fairly. If you sit on front of there, the plasma will run nicely on this, on this edge here. This one is one that we produce ourselves. Uh, it's a D44 product. Uh, we get it made and uh, it's stainless steel. Uh, aluminium ones are available, uh, but you find with aluminium ones uh, and a plasma rope, uh, they do wear, especially on the corners. Uh, we get uh, sand and grit in the plasma rope. And as it's coming in, uh, it does wear the aluminium away quite badly at times. So that's why we use a stainless steel one here. Okay, on installing the fair lead, uh, very often uh, the fair lead, you buy a fair lead and it's not married up with the bumper. Ours is both D44, so this is going to be right, but I'm just going to explain what you can come across. When fitting the fair lead, you must make sure that the bumper isn't protruding beyond the fair lead edge. Sometimes these holes are cut too small. And when you put the fair lead on, you can see part of the edge and then when the rope is installed it will run on the edge of the bumper rather than the fair lead so you have to make sure that when it's in place no bits of the bumper are showing okay the next stage is uh, the front grill obviously I've got to do some cutting so what I do is place the grill in, in place like so and then we can work out what needs to be cut. OK, I've cut the grill now. Um, I'm happy with that. I've had to leave a little bit extra room here for the lead to go in. And I've also had to leave a bit more room here so the hand can go in to operate the uh, free spool lever. Uh, I always like to keep it quite close to whatever we're going to, but in some cases you need uh, better access, especially when you've got gloved hands. OK, I've installed my isolator in, in this position there. The terminal's at the back. Uh, I can now work out how I'm going to route my cables. I place that there. I need this cable to come up to it from the winch, the winch to the isolator. So with my cable mark to where I need to cut, 
to go to that isolator. I'm going to just cut that one off like so. And then we can get it prepared for a new terminal. Obviously, being a, a specialist company, we've got all the tools to do it, a special crimp tool. Um, I would advise, uh, if you're doing a job like this, just to go to an auto electrician or, or someone that is used to fitting winches, just to get these ends crimped on properly. You can solder them on, but uh, it ends up being quite messy. Um, but in, as you'll see in a minute, this one will crimp it on uh, with no fear of it coming off. Obviously, we don't want the ends coming off for two reasons. One, it'll stop the winch working. And uh, also, two, if it comes off, then this live wire is flying around uh, wherever it can do, and then we we'll cause shorts and, and all sorts of problems. As you can see, that's crimped on nicely with a stake there and that's not coming off. Then what we do, just uh, cover this over with a bit of heat shrink. Okay, now we need to thread our wires up through towards the battery area. Uh, now, this is Discovery, and usually we go underneath, beside the body mount on these. Um, so, we need to feed the tooth through. And that's one. And then we feed the other one through. When disconnecting a battery, always disconnect a battery with the negative terminal first, because as you're undoing it, if you slip the spanner, you sh short your spanner out, but because you're on the negative side, it won't matter. It's advisable on the isolator to put uh, a rubber boot over the wires, so that once in place, it just gives it that extra insulation, uh, because obviously uh, we've got live power here. Uh, although it's a long way away from any metal, uh, you never know a front end shunt or something happening on the front end pushing pushing it back uh, and things could start shorting out so it's wise just to get hold of some some rubber boots just to insulate things and now with the, with the isolator wired in and the wires run I've got to work on the battery area now generally uh, what we can do is add that wire to the existing pole here but as you can see it's quite a a uh, combination of, of wires are in this battery so it's really advisable that we change the terminal um, and we change the terminal to, to one that that goes on uh, and screws up but it's got a post sticking up which a nut can go on uh, and then the uh, the terminal can fit like so we have brought the cables up through from the cross member up beside the radiator and I've just put some what they call conduit uh, around both cables just to protect them and stop them rubbing on various pipes, bits of the bodywork, just to stop any shorts going on. And I've brought them up and, as I said, I've changed the terminals with all these post terminals because of all these wires that are coming in, uh, just, just to tidy things up a bit. Now, we've got everything nice and clean, nice and tight, because one of the problems with winches is that they need good contacts. Uh, and also, again, as I've said, you don't put the earth to somewhere on the car and at earth point it has to come straight to the battery where it receives the power from the battery and the alternator at its direct source. And okay, down in the corner is the conduit running right to the, to the end here, just so, again, there's nothing rubbing through, nothing shorting, all nicely cable tied up, so it's all as it should be, and neat and tidy, ready for fitment. Right, so that's the winch fitted, and now I'm gonna just test that everything's okay. So we put the isolator key in, turn it like so, and which working fine. Now the importance of the isolator, uh, and especially in this sort of position, is that if anything goes wrong, quickly take the isolator out and everything's dead. Now I have seen some fitments uh, and it's obviously a lot easier to fit the isolator underneath the bonnet, which is not a great idea. If anything goes wrong, you've got to open the bonnet. And also if you off-roading for a day, you get a bit of damage on the bonnet, and uh, it's stuck, you can't open it up. Any problems with the winch, you can't get your isolator. With the isolator situated here, anything happens, you can immediately just grab it and take it out for safety reasons.